mais uma vez aqui ó, no APA... Apa Chamber, queimando, pegando fogo. Nós estamos muito felizes com o que Deus tem feito, com aquilo que Deus tem realizado. Não esquece de subscribe aí e aperta aí o like aí. Indica uh, esse canal para outras pessoas. Uh, é, como muitas pessoas que nos conhecem sabem disso. É um esforço para mim entrar nessa área, porque a gente está aprendendo. E, mas eu sou tão grato a Deus pelas pessoas que, estão sido, que têm sido levantadas para nos encorajar. Os irmãos que estão nos ajudando aqui no estúdio, né? eles têm nos encorajado de uma forma tremenda. Eu queria te agradecer, eu queria agradecer os intercessores que têm intercedido por esse podcast, por nosso canal, e têm nos encorajado de uma forma tremenda. E cada vez que nós gravamos, interessante, cada vez que a gente grava um programa, a gente sente a presença de Deus muito forte aqui. Uh, no estúdio e, e tem sido um privilégio muito grande uh, sabe <risos> é sobre a presença é sobre a presença de Jesus é sobre o óleo do Senhor e eu sei que muitos de vocês estão sendo tocados eu creio que esse episódio em especial vai tocar muito a sua vida eu estou aqui com um young man com um jovem uh, o nome dele é Prince e eu conheci ele há poucos dias atrás ele faz parte de um ministério de avivamento e Deus tem usado ele nos Estados Unidos tem ele queima pelo Brasil, ele falou comigo, eu quero mudar para o Brasil, eu falei, ah cara, o que, que é isso, né, e ele queima por Jesus, ele queima pelo Senhor, ele tem, quantos anos ele tem? 25, 25 years old, right? 25, sim. 25 anos de idade, single, solteiro, oh, nem vou falar com o cara, single, solteiro. yes, single, brasileira, solteiro, brasileira, <risos> tá indo para o Brasil, oh, meu pai, misericórdia, aleluia, aleluia, aleluia. <risos> um homem de Deus que pega fogo, Aí, ó, vou mudar o ministério agora, ó. O dating online, my goodness. <risos> Mas é um, um homem de Deus queimando por Jesus e, 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 e vai ter o subtitle, a legenda aí para vocês lerem, né? A gente vai tentar fazer em inglês, vai ser simples. Acompanha aí, não perde não, vai ser bênção. My friend, such a great honor to have you here with us. Uh, uh, it's a privilege to be with you, a prince. Wonderful name. That's a wonderful name. That's a prophetic name. Uh, that's <laughs> wonderful. And uh, Thank you. Uh, having the time with you uh, and being in worship with you was powerful. Uh, Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we experienced the presence of God. And also, uh, I, I really want not just to hear you more, but also to have uh, the young people in Brazil hear what God is doing with you. And uh, just tell me a little bit about you, you, you where you're born and how you got saved, and tell us a little bit about that. Yes, so I was born in a city called Tampa, Florida. Uh, my mother was here on vacation, so she went to labor and had me in Tampa, and I was raised in central Florida, a small town called Bartow. Bartow. Bartow, that's outside of Lakeland. Um, and, you know, uh, basically before I got saved, I live a I lived a very crazy life before Jesus. Uh, actually, the Lord delivered me from a homosexual lifestyle. I lived in that uh, community for many years. Mm -hmm. um, no father to, to guide me, to teach me, was raised by a single mother. But even through all of that, uh, I always had a burning desire mm. to serve God. Mm. And so I ran from God, but I couldn't get far. Wow, wow. And how, how did you get introduced to the gospel? Tell me a little bit. When I was about two years old, actually, I had a visitation. Uh, Jesus would appear to me. Uh, angels would appear to me. The Holy Spirit would speak to me. Mm. And, I, and I can remember uh, clearly, uh, my mother had this brown sofa in her living room. And she was sitting at the dining room table. And I remember I just started laying hands on my sisters and they would fall. And then wow. I would, <laughs> you know, and, and my mom would watch. And when I turned about five years old, you know, I wanted to be a cowboy. So, you know, all the Westerns. And yeah. I'd, I had this purple suit, these cowboy boots, a cowboy hat. And I'd run around the, you know, the, you know, the community talking to people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a, a man who was a street preacher. He, you know, he couldn't speak the best. He didn't dress the best, but he loved Jesus. Mm. And he would take me around the community and would give me a microphone and say, preach. With, with how old you were? You? I was five years old. Wow. And I remember preaching and I, I remember drug dealers would throw their drugs away. They would cry. Mm. <laughs> and um, so I just kept serving God. And, and of course, I had a journey, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes, sir. That's, that's wonderful, man. That's good news. That's wonderful. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. And how you got involved with the ministry after, you know, 
after that, like uh, the ministry that you're involved right now? With Pastor Eddie James? Yes, tell me a little bit. Uh, so years before Pastor Eddie James, um, I served. Um, you know, I'll, you know, I don't believe in church hopping. I believe you, you know, you get into a place and you and you submit to your leaders, and you serve. You know, there is no greater position than to serve in the house of God. Mm-hmm. You know, they, can you say that again? There is no greater position than to serve in the house of God. That, that's great. Um, you know, you know, David says in Psalms, there is one thing that I, de- you know, that I desire, and this is what my heart seeks, that I yes. would dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life <laughs> to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And so I always felt safe. I always felt safe in the house of the Lord. And uh, so I served in ministry uh, just as an usher or, you know, um, just as a student, you know, for many mm-hmm. years. And I remember um, I had a heart, you know, I still have this heart to bring leaders and nations together, to be a bridge, to expand the kingdom of God. And I I would have young missionaries who were dreaming meet at my house and I would bring them together and we would talk about vision. So I kept serving. And then I had a season where I actually got to attend Laguinia and I was there for two and a half years and I served there. And I remember I was praying to God. I said, Father, I need a spiritual father who would believe in me who would push me and who would not be threatened by me. Because mm-hmm. I have a lot of vision, you know, and I'll just talk about what God is going to do. I know you, you're saying, but you just said things that are very important. I need a spiritual father that what? Would believe in me. Would believe in me. Would push me. Would push me. And would not be threatened by me. Oh, so you guys are hearing this. This is the kind of spiritual fathers that we need, this kind of leadership that's not going to, that's going to believe in you. That's going to push you to the calling that God has for you. And he's not going to be afraid of you. He's not yes, be That's good. That's wonderful. Go ahead. Yes, go sir. ahead. Go ahead. You, you know, uh, Pastor Eddie. You, you know why I'm asking you to stop yes, that? Because there's thousands of young people out, out there. They are listening to this. Yes, sir. And they are looking for the same thing. They, they have a passion. They have a fire. But they don't have anybody that believe in them. They don't have anybody that push them. And are not afraid of their gifts, of the anointing. But say, you know what? Go. I'm here with you. I say yes to you. Yes, sir. And, and, and for me, this is so precious. That's the kind of thing that we value a lot in a ministry. I believe that the calling of the leadership is to do that. Yes, it's sir. It's to mentor. It's to say, yeah, I believe in you. Go and go forward. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, please don't be sorry. I'm wondering. <laughs> and you know, Pastor Eddie always says this to me or to the team. He says, I want my ceiling to be your floor. Come on. And and even, you know, the fact that I'm with Pastor Eddie today is a miracle. I was praying to God while still at Lagunia, and Lagunia was amazing. And so I didn't even know why God wanted me to leave, but I just felt it was time for me to step out and travel more and preach more. And and I wanted to make sure I had a spiritual father who did those three things. Mm-hmm. Believe in me, push me, and not be threatened by me. And I remember a, a Brazilian pastor, as I was praying for days, reached out to me and said, Prince, I was praying. God showed me your face. We have to meet. And I thought, maybe this is the one I've mm-hmm, been praying mm-hmm. for. And I meet with this Brazilian pastor and he takes me to this building, about $8 million US, and says, we want you to be the pastor. And as I'm sitting with him, I remember a prophetic word I got. And this is crazy, pastor. Uh, when I was about 13, a prophet came to my church. I was going to an African church. There was no Brazileros, no Hispanics, no Gringos, nada. Solo Africanos. And the prophet said to me, Prince, I see the nations of the earth upon your life. But the biggest flag I see above your head is a nation of Brazil. Wow. You cannot make this up. There is no Brazilians. And he didn't know that I was dreaming that I would live in Brazil, marry a Brazilian, and preach in Brazil. <laughs> and so there was no reason for me to even leave where I was. And so I was, and so this pastor offers me the church and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit reminded me of a word I got when I was that same night and the prophet said, but be careful because in your early 20s, many people will offer you positions, do not take them because they will stunt your growth and they will prostitute your gift, wow. meaning they will use you for their benefit. And he didn't know that. So I declined the offer. The very next day, I received a message on my Instagram from Eddie James. I couldn't believe it. And he said in the message, message, son, I've been touched by your message to me. Do you live in Orlando? Well, I was confused. And here's the miracle. I never messaged him. Wow. 
but he tells me there is a message that he read for me. I don't know what the message is. And it's funny because he had moved from Tennessee to Orlando to join nations, to become a pastor at Nations Church. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, in fact, I do live in Orlando. I'm about 10 minutes away from you. He said, can you come to Nations this Sunday? I want to meet with you. Remember I told you I was mm -hmm. praying for a father. Mm -hmm. I don't care about platform. I just want a father. I had the platform at Lagoonia, and thank God for that. I, I, I didn't need a platform. I had mm -hmm. one. And I remember I met with him, and I opened my heart to him. And he said, well, I would love you to travel with us sometimes. And that wasn't a confirmation for me. Here was the confirmation. I will never forget. The very next day, I'm sitting in my car. I was still working uh, in a job. But I tell you what, it is so much better working for Jesus. Yes, it's free. Right. And I'm sitting in the I'm sitting in the parking lot of a barbecue restaurant, and as I'm getting my food, I get a text message from Pastor Eddie James. He was in Nigeria for the Sea Fan Crusade, and he goes, "Son, I stepped off stage because I'm thinking about you. I love you, and I'm praying for you." Wow! That was the confirmation. The word "son." Wow! Praise and that's God. how I've I got to where I am with Pastor Eddie James now. Wow! That's wonderful, man. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes, sir. That's powerful. Uh, now, tell me, yesterday we were talking about revival, and, and you mentioned some of the things that you were seeing, because a lot of Brazilians, they ask me, is God moving in the U.S.? And even some Americans, they tell me, like, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of people, they are saying, God's not moving in America. It's over. There is nothing that's going to happen. And sometimes I even talk to very good pastors, friends of mine, and they say, you know, Jude, so you see, you, you, tell, you tell us things that God is doing in Brazil, but you know, that's Latin America, that's uh, Africa, that's uh, Brazil or Central America, but you know, the U.S. is different. So I kind of refuse to believe that the gospel has less power in America. I agree. That Jesus is not the same Jesus in America. And yes, yesterday when we were talking and you were sharing <coughs> about the things that you were seeing God doing in America, that was exciting. Yes, sir. That's exciting. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? I want them to hear this, that yes, God sir. is moving in this nation. Yes, sir. And my response to these leaders would be, have more faith. Come on. And my response would also would be, you have not traveled enough. Mm -hmm. We've been up and down the East Coast. Uh, Pastor Eddie James has created a platform for young people to express their hearts and to show their giftings. Mm. And, and he shares the stage with us and he's not selfish. He, he pushes us. And so as you traveled from the north to the south, from the east to the west, we have begun to see crazy moves of God. It started for us. We were in Tennessee resting for two days and the band was rehearsing. Mm -hmm. And in the time of rehearsal, I walked into the room and my brother James, who was the, who was the leader of Ultimate Call with Eddie James Ministries, he lifts his hands. And when he lifts his hands, it's almost like a wave hit the room. In the power of God filled the room. And we began to speak in tongues. We began to weep. We began to seek God. And it was so powerful that Pastor Eddie James came out of his office. And he sat here as a proud father. And he filmed it. <laughs> and he was excited that we were just seeking the Lord the way we were. And we thought that was just it. And the next day, on um, before that, I was not on this trip, but the team, they left the church service and they got into the van to leave. They began to pray. They stayed in the parking lot for hours. They, we got report back that the parking lot in which they were praying in, a, an extended revival has broken out in that church. Come on. So revival is in America. And the next day we went to North Carolina and I didn't know what was going to happen. All I know is I, 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 I was, as I was preaching about how, how when Lot was taken, by the enemy, how his uncle Abraham went after him and he took 318 of his best men to fight for his nephew. And the reason I was speaking that message is I believe parents needed to know and pastors needed to know, do not give up on fighting for my generation. There is a lot who needs prayer. There is a lot who needs you. And when I said that, the altar is filled with people. And the power of God was so strong, demons began to manifest. People began to be slain in the Holy Spirit. There were kids laying on the altar for hours, and they were shaking under the presence of God. And they got up with visions, and it didn't stop. Every city we've been to nightly, the power of God has come. I received a text message a few days ago. Chavon, my friend, he, he's a singer with Ultimate Call. He texted me and said, Prince, tonight, deaf ears opened up. 
We were in another city. There was a little girl in a wheelchair. The Lord healed her. She got out of her wheelchair. She picked up her crutch and she ran around the church. I thought that was it, Pastor. When we went to do the offering, there was a lady. She wouldn't stop walking around. And I thought, this is odd. We're doing offering. Everyone is sitting down. Why is she walking around? And before someone could ask her, she began to scream, my back, my back. I haven't walked this freely in years. Come on, come on. Just, here in, just here in Fort Myers, I've been all over the country. But what I feel God is doing in Fort Myers, I have not felt. I have not felt. Just the other night, there was a brother. We're in the room talking. And I feel this pain in my back And it was starting to annoy me Because I knew it was not me I knew it was for someone else And I said who has back pain in here Because this pain is starting to bother me And I said we're going to pray for your back And I remember the Holy Spirit told me Pray that his leg would grow out Well I had never done this I said no I'm not doing that I don't think this is God <laughs> and, and it said it again I said brother please sit And I want to see if your leg is shorter than the other And the right leg was shorter Than the left leg and I prayed the first time, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command this leg to grow. One, two, three. Now, nothing happened. So I closed my eyes and I was so afraid. Of, as I'm praying, I'm pulling on his leg, saying, you know, leg grow, leg grow. And I opened my eyes up. His legs were even. His wife looked at me and said, my husband has not stood without pain Come in on. years. And he Praise came here God. and he testified. You know, the Bible says that this, you know, that testimony is a spirit of prophecy, which means God do it again. Yeah. You know, and so what I believe God is doing in America is amazing, but I believe what He's about to do in Fort Myers is even more amazing. Amen. I believe and, that too. And here's the last thing I'll say. I'm so sorry. He's got excited. No, I remember years ago the Lord showed me a vision. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've ever watched Western movies, mm -hmm. but whenever there's like a a bandit or a robber going from city to city, they'll put this little map up on the on the screen that looked really dirty and of America, and you see fire little things all over the map. And the Lord showed me a map of America, the same kind of map. And the fire started out west and it made its way east. And I said, God, I don't understand this. I'm in high school. Why would there be a revival there? Okay, that's great, but I don't live there. And the Lord spoke to me and said, son, I'm sending a wild revival. In other words, a wildfire to this nation. And I looked up what a wildfire was. And they would tell you that a wildfire cannot be put out, but they try to contain it. And the Lord said, son, the revival that I'm sending to America, people will try to put it out. They will try to contain it, but it would spread all over America. Amen, amen, amen. And we're waiting for that. I believe that God, yes. you know, the reason why God is changing people from praise to praise, like even us, he brought, he brought us to Fort Myers. And he told us something is going to happen here in this region. And I've seen God is moving powerfully in this area. That's exciting. You know, I believe that the church needs hope. Yes, sir. That God is still alive and that he's moving and he's still healing people. And uh, it's, it's exciting. To, and also for the younger generation to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be filled with power of God. Right. And to be like uh, on fire for Jesus. We need this. I, I believe that there is no other, oh, like we were talking the other day, uh, there is no other way. We need a supernatural intervention from yes. heaven. Yes. We need God to move in this nation. We need God to touch uh, America, to touch Brazil, to touch, to bring healing, to bring signs. Jesus. And I believe that God's going to use young people, man. Yes. I yes. believe that God is going to use your generation, that's going to use your generation to, to stand up and preach the gospel, to stand up and say, I, I, I believe it, I have faith, I know that God's going to move, because every move of God, historically, God used a young generation, and He's going to do it again. Yes, sir. Young people, they are willing to say, I give everything up for the glory of God. I surrender myself for the Oh, we experienced a great move of God in Brazil 20 years ago, and... What I see, I see in America uh, the same thing. I see young people, like wow. you guys, wow. say, you know what? I want the presence of God. I want to worship Jesus. I don't want to be in charge. I don't, I don't need a platform. I don't need to be seen by men. I just need the glory of God. And that kind of environment becomes irresistible to heaven. Yes. That's what I believe. This is exciting. This is good news. This is good news. I was gonna sorry, so sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say earlier when you were when you were talking about, you know, 
people saying that there is no revival in America. And I had this thought that I believe is from the Holy Spirit that said the light shines brightest in the darkness. Come on, come on, come on. I heard someone say years ago, before there can be a revival of the light, there must first be a revival of darkness. Wow. You don't need, you don't need light if there is no darkness. Yes. And I love Isaiah chapter 60. We were, we were talking about this the other day that says, uh, the darkness are covering the earth, but upon you arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is coming upon you. So there was like, the Lord said, oh yes, things are really bad. But you know what? With you is different. Arise and shine because now is your hour when the darkness are covering the earth. Now is your time to sh to arise and shine. So I'm I'm kind of so excited with this. Mm -hmm. Even with Brazil, I know that Brazil is going through so many difficult times now. People have so many questions and, and worries and everything. But I'm excited. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I am excited. You're dreaming. I'm dreaming. You're I dreaming. Know, I know that God is going to do something awesome. He's going to move in a powerful yes, way. He's going to, oh, come on, Jesus. And Joel talks about this in the yes. book of Acts and the book of Joel. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And what I said today to Pastor Kesley, I said, the issue in our generation is there's so much rebellion. You know, we want to do our own meetings. And I, and I go and I say, where are the fathers? Mm-hmm. We're the mothers. We cannot have vision unless we first have their dreams. I need your dream come on, come in on. order for there to be a vision. And do you know what happened after, after I left the, the meeting on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. I felt from the Holy Spirit for this event that we're going to do, I have to invite the mayor. I have to invite the police chief. Because if we're going to see revival, they need to also experience revival. God and I went to the police station of Fort Myers. And someone told me, they said, Prince, many people have come before you and they have not been able to reach the chief. I said, I know who sent me. We will reach the chief. Wow. I spoke to a lady behind the glass. She, should have given, she said, give me a few minutes. I began to pray. I said, God, you sent me here. The chief must come out. The lady came back a few moments later and said, the chief will be outside with you in a few moments. He walked outside. We told him about the shift conference. And I said, if you want to see crime reduced in your area, you need to partner with the church. Come on. That is the only way. It's through prayer, it's through fasting, and it's through the supernatural power of God. And do you know what? He's sending so many of his police officers to the conference that we're doing together. Glory to God. And tomorrow I will go see the mayor. Glory to God. That's exciting, man. That's yes, sir. Exciting. Tell me a little bit about the shift conference that you got. I know you guys are going to do one in Fort Myers, then you're going to do, uh, you're doing all over the place, right? All, all over the bit. country, hopefully in Brazil soon. Oh, conference, shift conference. Maybe something to Brazil. talk about yeah. Brazil. <laughs> yes. Tell me a little bit about this vision, shift conference. So shift conference is, is, is a movement began by Pastor Eddie many years ago. Um, it, it, you know, you know, it, it was to set up a platform for young people to use their giftings and their talents in order to glorify God and bring the supernatural power of God, believing to see a shift in an entire generation. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to, as a son, uh, Pastor Eddie has trusted me uh, in a new program we have for shift called the Shift Forerunner Program. Mm -hmm. And, I, and what, I, what I love this is because. Now, it's not that I'm sending myself. So many people, they send themselves. My father, he is sending me. And, and so if we're going to see revival everywhere. And we're here in Fort Myers in Naples. You know, um, we're going to have, you know, uh, if, if I may say, we're going to have Todd White and Maverick City and Sean Foyt, um, you, you, Robson Galveo from here mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Fort Myers, believing God for a move and a shift in this region. Oh, man, that's good, man. That's yes, sir. exciting. That's exciting. How you, you? This is good, man. This is really yes, sir. good. Uh, we are almost ending, but I, I want you to talk. I want to talk a little bit about Brazil. The other day, <coughs> you, you, you gave me, you gave us a word that you said that God was given. Yes, sir. About Brazil. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes, I do. A gente estava conversando e, e orando e ele falou: "Eu tenho uma palavra para o Brasil." E eu falei, compartilha essa palavra e nós estamos gravando porque eu quero que vocês ouçam essa palavra que Deus colocou no coração dele para o Brasil. Um, to say that we are talking about it and uh, go ahead and... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, vai ter o subtá, vai ter a legenda aí, você continua acompanhando. Go ahead, Brad. So, so I'm going to read this. <coughs> this is the message. 
the enemy is wanting to cause great distraction. In the, how, I'm sorry, sorry. How did you get this man, this word? I had a vision. Mm -hmm. I had a vision and I saw a principality that was hovering. In other words, floating over the nation of Brazil. And it's as if he was laughing at Brazil. He, he, it's as if the enemy was mocking Brazil. In other words, saying they don't even know. But he wanted, he wants to bring destruction to the nation of Brazil. Because it's one of the last, I think it is the last standing nation in South America that allows the church to do as it does freely. Yes, yes, it is. It is. Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, sir. The enemy is wanting to cause a great distraction in the church of Brazil to distract you from your assignment in order to release revival in the land. He has caused confusion in the nation, and now the people are more focused on taking to the streets to be heard by a government that is led by corrupt leaders. Only God will hear them. Only God can change the heart of man, even the corrupt man. What I saw in a vision was a principality. It was black, and it was hovering over the nation, looking down upon it. And he was causing confusion in the earth as it pointed at different regions of the nation. Though the media has made this a, more about politics, it is far bigger than politics. The plan behind this is a massive attack on the church of Brazil. I felt to my heart that the way the church must protest is through prayer movements all over the nation. If you only rely on the way in which you are doing it, in the end, you will fail and the kingdom of darkness will prevail. Pray, pray, pray. Fast, fast, fast. What is happening now is not about two presidents. It is a fight between light and darkness, good and evil. Pray and fast and you shall see victory. Only take to the streets and protest and your work shall be in vain. That's good, man. That's a word for Brazil. Praise God. Praise God. Do you think you can pray for Brazil now? I'll be honored. Yeah, I, I believe that God God is <coughs> using prophets to speak to the nation of Brazil. And I do believe that Brazil has a calling for this hour. I believe that Brazil has <coughs> a destiny for this hour. There are so many promises to the nation of Brazil. And the church in Brazil needs to understand that this hour is a very important hour to pray to fast, to worship, to trust the Lord, and, and just to say, you know, it's not about a man, it's about the kingdom of God. And he's standing in a calling. So okay, just pray, pray for Brazil. Yes. Father, we thank you right now for your presence even here. Come on, Jesus. Father, I thank you, and I declare oh, that you are I raising up Daniels in the nation of Brazil who would pray and who would fast and who would stand in the gap as watchmen over the nation. Come on, Jesus. Father, I thank you that the church of Brazil is being stirred up with the fire, the supernatural power of God. I thank you that the eyes of the leaders mm -hmm. and the eyes of the young people and the fathers and mothers are being opened and they are seeing the plan of the enemy. They are seeing the tricks and the schemes of the enemy. I thank you, my God, that Brazil will not fall into the snare. Come on, Jesus. They will not fall into the trap, but they will stand up and they will take up the full armor of God and they will trample on the head of the serpent. They will chop off the head of the python. They will chop off the head of the principality Man. that wants to reign over Brazil. I declare that Brazil belongs to Jesus. I thank you that the greatest revival that South America, that the world has ever seen will have its start in the nation of Brazil. On, I declare that prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, missionaries, they will raise, they will rise up in the name of Jesus and they will not stay and hide behind the walls of the church, but they would invade corporate, they would invade the corporate places, they would invade the schools, they would invade oh, the Jesus. streets. I thank you that what Brazil is about to experience will be far greater than Azusa, will be far greater than the Jesus movement, Father. Mm, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over Brazil. Come on, Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus even over the government. And I declare that you will raise up Josephs. You will raise up Josephs who would stand in the gap and who would not compromise, my God. 
Mm-hmm. Father, do it again as in the days of old. Raise up the Nehemiahs on, as in the days of old. In the name of Jesus, let the church be strengthened, Father. Amen, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Pai. Oh, I feel fire. Nós oramos pelo Brasil, Senhor. E nós declaramos, Pai, hallelujah. Nós declaramos que a igreja brasileira está se levantando com autoridade, com unção, com graça, com fé e com esperança. Deus, nós oramos para que o Senhor derrame uma onda da Tua yes, graça God. tão tremenda sobre, yes, a nação. Hey, sobre a nação brasileira agora. Vem uma onda da Tua graça. Deus, eu oro pela, pelos jovens do Brasil. Meu Deus, eu oro pelos jovens profetas do Brasil. Raise them up, God. Father, I pray for the young generation, the young generation of prophets, God. Raise them up in Brazil. Raise a prophetic generation yes, God, in Brazil. Yes, God, raise that's not going to be afraid to walk in holiness, in to walk in intimacy with you, Lord, and to prophesy to the dry bones. Father, yes, in the name God. of Jesus, we, we, we call, bring forth the calling to come the nation forth. of Brazil. Come forth, yes, Brazil. Yes, yes. Come forth your calling. Come forth your calling. Come forth your destiny. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, right now for this younger generation that yes. You're raising. Yes, Father, I see preachers, I see prophets, wow, I see apostles, yes, yes, I yes. see, Father, a wave of missionaries being being moved from Brazil, God. And we say, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for your mercy, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for sharing this. And uh, I pray that God, God is going to use it in a powerful way in many different nations. I believe that. And thank you very much. Uh, muito obrigado. De nada, uh, pastor. Um obrigado por todo. Te amo. Amém. Te amo, yeah. Brasil. Tamo junto. E Deus abençoe. Aleluia. Um abraço. Deus te abençoe. Amém. Queridos, um beijo. Deus te abençoe. Aperta aí o like aí e fala com a gente o que, que você achou. E julga essa palavra. Eu creio que vai abençoar muito a sua vida. Amamos vocês. Um beijão. Deus te abençoe. Amém.